best you go back to sleep, George. Henry? I'm off. Thanks for the party. Oh, I borrowed your bed. You didn't look as if you'd need it. I say, do you always go to sleep with a moose? <laughs> ah. Well, I, I probably took him to bed last night off the wall to have a chat with him, Henry. He's my old mate, you know, so, so thick and thin. You know, we were, we were living together before, Susie. And we're still still living together after, Susie. Yes, well, I haven't got time to listen to a chorus of my old Dutch. What's, what is the time, Henry? 8.45. Oh, hell. Hey, what are you doing? Susie is divorcing you today. Have you forgotten? Of course, I haven't forgotten. Well, anything. they won't expect you at the office. So go back to bed Certainly with the moose. Certainly I'm going into the office, Henry. I, I think I'll go in via the divorce courts. I don't know, I'll just walk past at the opportune moment, chuckling to myself. I mean, that was the whole idea of last night's day, wasn't it? Today is the beginning of my total freedom. The official end of Mrs. Susie Bassett. How about a black coffee? It's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll make it, Henry. Hell of a party last night, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Good night, <laughs> I think we created something of a record. Record? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, three complaints from a neighbour and uh, a visit from the police. You can't be a gang of blokes. But it makes you suddenly realise that women are redundant. Virtually. Well, anyway, they're redundant in my life, Henry. You know, I went to bed last night and I thought to myself, when I wake up this morning, I won't even be able to remember her name. Whose name? Susie's name. <laughs> Susie! Breakfast! Coming! Morning, Mum. Are you sure you don't want me to go to court with you, darling? Of course not, Mum. Oh, good heavens, I'm not marching off to war. Today's the victory parade. Yes. Well, you've certainly dressed the part. <laughs> what do you expect? Widow's weeds? No, no, but... but I thought I'd put the lot on. Just in case the press photographers were waiting. Photographers? Why? Well, because I'm the first woman in history to be simultaneously divorcing a man and a moose. Eat <laughs> corn cakes. How many eggs do you want? None, thanks, Mum. Oh, now, Susan... No, honestly, I... Mum, I'm only having the corn flicks so I don't rumble in court. Will you be coming back to lunch here after the... Uh, when it's all over? Well, you won't go to work, will you? Mm, of course I will. Jerry Neville's taking me to lunch. He was trying to think of a really dark funereal menu to fit the occasion. What? Oh, you know, black pudding and draught stout. <laughs> <laughs> Said to hell with draught stout, a celebration course for champagne. Celebration? Mm. So we're having champagne. And the most celebratory lunch we can think of for the most celebratory reason possible. And now I mustn't have any more or I won't have room for a blowout, will I? <laughs> Excuse me. I'll be over in a twinkling, Mrs. Bassett. Much nicer than going to the dentist. You don't even have to open your mouth. <laughs> and you've no children, that's a mercy. Nobody gets hurt. I've got four. All grown up and married now. I've always thought it would be a proud day for me if I handled their divorces. <laughs> oh. Grounds that the parties to the marriage, namely Suzanne Maria Bassett and George Hope Bassett, have lived apart for a continuous period of two years, immediately preceding the presentation of the petition. <laughs> Thank you. 
morning, Liz. Good morning, Mr. Bassett. Yes, 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 I see, I see, yes. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Come in today, Mr. Bassett. Didn't you? What's so different about today, Liz? Except that somewhere in some courtroom, some bloody barrister's just taking a fortune off me. <laughs> Man always pays, you know. It's damn unfair. Yeah, you know, I think on days like this, this statue of justice might have the decency to tip her scales a bit. Are you all right, Mr. Bassett? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why don't you go home? Oh, what's home, Liz? Three tatty rooms crowded with memories. Yes, well. One of the things I I don't know whether I ever to, ever told you this, Liz. One of the things that Susie and I used to row about more than anything else was her particular habit of combing her hair over the wash basin. Do you know what I was thinking as I was washing my brushing my teeth this morning? I was thinking what I wouldn't give to see a little cluster of blonde hairs in the plug hole again. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I've just, I've just seen her, Liz. I went, I went down to the divorce court and, and she came out and she was crying and I, I felt a bit like... Anyway, I, I went into the pub and had a drink. Would you believe that? Seriously, yes, I mean, do, honestly, would you think I've, I've been having a drink? Well, of course, it was that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are, you see, a beautiful marriage like, like that all over because of a moose. Well, good gracious me, I mean, not, not, not a whole moose even, he was only part of a moose. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the moose, Liz? You touched on it. Yes. Yes, Susie hated it. Yes, it would be, well, it sort of brought things to her head. I mean, not, not that I uh, <laughs> hung him in the, in the bedroom or the loo or anything. I mean, he just lived very quietly in, in the lounge. <coughs> He did moat very slightly <laughs> from time to time, but you, do, you don't give somebody the boots because he's losing his hair, do you? He had such a gentle look in his eyes. Yeah, I often said to Susie, I'm sure he forgave the man who shot him. <laughs> yes, well, do you know what I think's half the trouble, Mr Bassett? What do you think's half the trouble, Liz? What you said just now. Three rooms crowded with memories. Yeah, well, I've tried to find somewhere else, Liz. I mean, I've looked, I've looked all over London. You know I have. Yes, but I mean, London's going to remind you, isn't it, Mr Bassett? Why don't you try somewhere in the country, right away from it all? Right away from it all. Just a minute. I had some house lists. Do you remember I brought them in to show you? Oh, yes. Ages ago, Susie and I were looking for somewhere to... Yes, a little cottage in the country to get away from it all. Now, there was, yes, there was one particular place we liked best of all. A little... A, a, yeah, beautiful, a real bit of Shangri-La, just outside Stoke Poges. <laughs> there we are. How about that for getting away from it all? Mrs. Bassett, just the place to get away from it all. That's <laughs> ah, a bit more like home, eh, my old son? <laughs> Wide open spaces.
Somebody move again. I wonder what they like. <laughs> Afternoon. Somebody moving in, eh? Well, that's the opinion we come to, sir. Seems to be doing that stuff in there. <laughs> uh, couldn't give me a clue, could you? Eh? Uh, do you fancy a drink? Carry on, boys. <laughs> <laughs> come on in, will you? Oh, thank you very much, sir. Now then, what would you like? Uh, drop a scotch? Oh, don't mind if I do, sir. <laughs> Say when. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Right. Listen, you couldn't give me uh, uh, any idea about the, the people moving in, could you? <laughs> Not people. No? One person. Really? <laughs> uh, ma ma male, female, any, any, any idea? <laughs> female. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have any idea about uh, age, age-wise, would you? How do you mean? Well, I don't, I don't want to be stuck living next to an old boiler, do I? Boiler? <laughs> well, have you known somebody about 60? <laughs> My wife's 62. <laughs> She's not old. No. And I've never felt like boiling her. <laughs> not, not a good start, George. Be this number two, Cops Cottages? Yes, it is. Henry! Oh, you said pop it if I was passing. Come on in! Come and have a look at the ancestral home. I parked in the lane. They don't have meters hidden in the hedges, do they? <laughs> hey, very nice. Hello, Rudy. Well, you're quite the squire. Well. Hello. Spying on your neighbours already? Well, what one neighbour, uh, actually, Henry? Female. At uh, this? Here, here. <coughs> what does that dressing table say to you, Henry? Nothing, George. I'm not bad and I never use one myself. <laughs> I say, did you mention a drink? Oh, I didn't. Sorry, Henry. What are you going to have? Well, a vodka if you've got... Stay, stay at the window, will you? What? Well, well, keep your eye on the ladies' gear. You mean you want a running commentary? Well, anything that might be useful, Henry. Oh, I couldn't be that lucky, could I? Living next door to something unattached and new bar? She'd be unattached, all right. I bet she wears heavy shoes and a moustache. <laughs> Lots of books. Oh, hell. More books? <coughs> Paperbacks, are they? No, heavy tomes, actually. Oh, Lord. She might be a female physicist. Thank you. Bed? Ben? <laughs> now, you're not telling me that that bed belongs to a hairy physicist with hobnail boots. <laughs> it's feminine down to its last spring. George, the carpet had my vodka. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that picture. <laughs> Henry, she's sophisticated, social and, and quite definitely sexy. Well, good luck. I don't think I'll need it, Henry. Get my drink, will you? <laughs> No, I don't, I don't think I'll need any luck here, Henry. Living next door to each other, miles from anywhere. It's just like being on a desert island, isn't it? Well, it's better we've got plumbing. <laughs> George, I never know you're so confident. Well, I'm not confident, Henry, am I? I'm just whistling in the dark. I mean, I'm just jacking up my hopes. <coughs> but I mean, whatever she's like, whoever she is, one thing's for sure. What? Well, she's going to help me forget Susie. <laughs> <laughs> Like a melody. Ooh. I wonder what it could possibly be, Boris. I'm sure you You're not living there. I don't believe it. But well, somebody's, somebody's got... got to move. All right. It's not going to be me. Well, it's not going to be me. I was here first. Well, then you can move out first. Don't be ridiculous, Susie. Look, George, I, I didn't divorce you so that I could chat to you over the garden wall. Nobody divorced anybody. It was a mutual breakdown of marriage. Well, if you live there, I'm going to have my own breakdown. All right, all right, all right, Susie. Are we going to have to talk about this? Yes. Are you on the phone? <laughs> yes. What's the number? 834. Right. I'll ring. Right. And you haven't time to run a bath.
You've got the receiver off. I know. I took it off in case someone else rang me. <laughs> Hello, George. George? It's Mother. Oh, um, Mother, I, I can't talk now. George is ringing me. How do you know? Oh, because he's just been round here to tell me. <laughs> Did you get the engaged tone? Yes, what happened? You try and fit in a quick call to your mother. Yes, I, I was talking to my mother, but she rang me. All right, I'll, uh, look, I'll call you back in a couple of hours, all right? Oh, we, we're finished talking now. In two seconds flat? What happened? She have a heart attack or did the magic roundabout come on? <laughs> Sex is really trying to... All right, all right, all right. Third time lucky. Uh, unless... What? Well, your mother doesn't know my phone number, does she? No. Well, come on in. In there. <laughs> I don't bite. You do, but I'll risk it. <laughs> Forgive me if I don't carry her over the threshold, won't you? Oh, you never did. What do you mean on our wedding day? The spirit was willing, but the champagne won. <laughs> I can't offer you a drink, but the removal men broke one bottle, drank the other, and I've lost my corkscrew. <laughs> well, I've got some whiskey. Whiskey? Yes. You used to beat the temperance drum rather loudly, as far as I can remember. Well, only because if you rested your head on my shoulder during the evening, I wanted it from affection, not unconsciousness. <laughs> Thank you. Well, look, um, sit, sit down. Thank you. Um, how have you been? Fine. Good. How have you? Been? Yes. Oh, fine. Good. Yes. <laughs> Mummy? Very well. Oh, super. <laughs> Your parents? Well, Dad's been a bit down. Oh, oh dear. Well, he's, he's getting better now. Ah. Oh. Mum's still perky. <laughs> Good. Yes. <laughs> Look, um, to touch on a delicate subject. Oh, do touch. Thank you, yes. Well, I was just thinking, you know, sitting here, chatting like this. Swapping medical reports. Pardon? Yes. yes. Is that your bloody phone yes, again? I'm sorry. I'm... Oh, look, come on. Pardon? Would you like a drink? Ah, oh. Uh, oh, yeah, um, it's in there, I think. Right. Hello? Oh. Hello, David. <laughs> How sweet of you to ring. <laughs> Were you? Uh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, yes, but I'm sorry I wasn't here. I heard your call from afar. Like a mating call, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, you're, you're very wicked. Yes, you are. Or just as long as you stay like it. Soda. Excuse me, there's no no soda. Could I, could I have it? <laughs> what? Oh, yes, that's my next-door neighbour. Yes, we... we found we'd met before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you all about it, darling. Oh, Any time you like, you... you know you're always welcome. <laughs> Oh, well, it is a bit of a trek, but um, I'll have a nice large scotch waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know the address, don't you? Number one, Cops Cottages. <laughs> and you're number one, too, darling. <laughs> oh, well, thanks so much for ringing, David. Bye. Bye. <laughs> 
Oh, he's <laughs> such fun. <Yeah. laughs> now then, where were we? Who is he? <laughs> Who's who, darling? Uh, David. Oh, he's just a friend. Yes, well, he didn't sound like the plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Very sweet, actually. Oh, how nice. Oh, and such fun. Fun, yes, you said. Now then, I think I'll have a drop of How long of have you known him? David? Yes, yes. Oh, ages. Since uh, bef before the divorce, was it? Um, round about then. And, it, and it's been fun all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, nothing serious, though. No, no, just, just, just fun. That's right. Yes. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a bit of lemon. Well, I'm delighted. Very good for my diet. I must say, absolutely delighted. What, that I'm on a diet? Yes, I'm being very Damn good. Damn your diet. If anybody's been on a diet, I have a diet of no bloody fun. <laughs> no fun, no women, no parties, no nothing. Just skulking in the flat, choking back my tears and drinking to forget. Tranquilizers by day and sleeping pills at night, I ate the bloody things like jelly babies. <laughs> I promise you, Gina Lola Bidgeter could have knocked at my door stark as. Do you know what I'd have said? No thanks, I think I'll leave it for this week. <laughs> and all this time you've been romping around with every oversex cretin who's casually ghosted you. God, Susie, I didn't expect you to go into a nunnery. But you didn't have to turn every day into a trailer for a blue film. Have you quite finished, no, George? No, I have not finished. Well, I've finished of... listening so you can switch off. Switch off? You're the one who could switch off, my girl, not me. That day outside the divorce court, I... I thought my life had ended. Oh. I walked across Fleet Street with a ball and chain on each foot. The balls would have suited you. <laughs> I dragged my way back to my lonely flat, which... Lonely? Oh, did the moose say hello? Oh, the moose, just leaving the moose out of it. <laughs> You've still got that moose. You hang grimly on to the one thing that more than anything else helped to break up our marriage. You talk about choking back the tears. Why didn't you try choking that bloody moose? I'm not going to be sidetracked, Susie. This is your first night here and a man rang. Uh, my mother rang too. What are you going to read into that? A man rang with whom you've been having fun. You can't deny it. Uh, George, look, look, we are divorced. The marriage is over. I can see any man I like, and however many men I like. And supposing they're out there lining up and I'm letting them in two by two, it's none of your business. Well, you won't be seeing uh, very much of me, Susie, don't worry. Well, I hope I can depend on that, Georgia. I don't want you coming around here every ten minutes with an empty sugar bowl. You had an empty sugar bowl as well, as far as I can remember. Well, I won't again. All right, all right. From now on, no communication at all, right? Not even by telephone. Not even by carrier pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I just hope I can't hear you snoring through the wall. I threw away my earplugs two years ago. Two pieces of paper. What for? If you want an Atlantic Charter, let's have an Atlantic oh, Charter. Come on, come on, a list of rules and regulations and we'll see your breaks them first. Right. Right. Well, it won't be me. It won't be me either. I will achieve more than the Atlantic Charter ever did. Ready? Ready? Right. Rule one. Rule one. No fraternising. No. Directly or indirectly? In brackets, either directly or indirectly, yes. We keep out of each other's way as much as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. Rule two, we keep out of each other's way as much as you only... And rule 17, paragraph three. <laughs> no assistance rendered by either party to the party of the first or second part. Right? Right. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> I haven't got a corkscrew. <laughs> ah, 
Um, I'm just making sure that you understand that the uh, charter starts with effect from 23.59 hours tonight. It started when you left here? Uh, no, no, no. It starts at uh, 23.59, most other legal documents. Why? I need a corkscrew. <laughs> George, this isn't the way it's to go on, is it? Uh, well, no, not after 23, 59 hours tonight. Not after 19, 43 hours tonight. Pardon? Which is the time now. Uh, from now on, no assistance rendered, rendered by either, by either party. party to the... It's 19.45 hours. Uh, yes, I know, uh, No but... communication after, after 19.43. I mean, they were your own words. This is an emergency, George. I just want to borrow some... Borrow, borrow, borrow. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, rule 17, um, no, no assistance rendered by either party... I've had a fuse. ...either party to the party of the first or second part. I've no fuse wire. Neither have I. Oh, well, a, a, a candle, then. Oh, a candle. Ah. Candle. Candle, candle, candle. Ah, oh, yes, here we are. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, rule 17, no assistance rendered uh, by oh, the party. Oh, get knotted! Tonight's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, in brackets, either directly or... Oh, it's just a candle, please. Never let it be said that mine is not a generous soul. <coughs> I'd appreciate its return, Susie, at, uh, at oh, 0800 hours in its original and pristine state. Would you like me to try and save the wax that drips off it? <laughs> 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 